Well, good morning, good day to you, good evening to you, whenever you're watching this. This is Grace Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Bruce Kishnick, Senior Pastor here at Grace. And today is the 18th of January. We're already past the middle of that month. Our uh, title for our meditation today is Into the Bathtub. The reading for today is from Matthew 3, starting at verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water, and at that moment heaven was opened. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Have you ever considered why Jesus presents himself to be baptized by John the Baptist there in the Jordan? After all, John's baptism is a baptism of repentance. His call to everyone who comes to hear him is, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. Well, what sins does Jesus have to repent of? None. He's the Holy Son of God and pure in a way that no other human being had ever been or will be. He has done nothing of which he is guilty or culpable. And still, he tells John the Baptist, it is right for us to do this now to fulfill all righteousness. So what could that mean? I find myself always thinking of this illustration. When I was a kid living home on the farm, we did not take baths or showers every day or even every other day. Not until I was in high school and was becoming acutely aware of girls did I begin to bathe more regularly and at least wash my hair every morning before I went off to school. Until then, Saturday was bath night. Well, that was the night that we all took turns and got our bath. In addition to that, though, there was also a saying that Dad had, it costs money to heat water. So the standard rule was, you did not drain the tub after you, you're, you, know, you took a bath, but rather you just got in there, added enough hot water to make it comfortable once again, and went to work bathing. So... Me being the eldest, I frequently was the last of five to get into that bathtub to take my bath. And many is the time when I got into that tub and looked down at my feet and could not see them. The water was that murky. Um, many a time that I got in the water that now would just disgust me but didn't really know any better. It was often so murky, but I dutifully added the hot water and went to work scrubbing and cleansing myself. It really wasn't until I was older and thought about that that I realized how much of my siblings' dirt and such was in that soup. I climbed in where my brothers and sisters had been, and I'm sure I carried away some of their uncleanness when I climbed out of that tub. That's sort of how I think of Jesus' baptism. John had been baptizing in that spot in the Jordan for days, maybe for weeks. And figuratively and spiritually, the waters of that place were heavy and foul with the sins and the transgressions of the people who had been baptized. They were washed to cleanse them of their sins and of their rebellion. And in a sense, those sins were in that water thick as the hair on a, on a dog's tail. And then comes their brother Jesus. He comes to that dingy pool. He steps into that water full of other sins. And he takes their transgressions, our transgressions, upon himself. The righteousness he has come to fulfill is not his own. His righteousness is intact. But no, he has come to see to our righteousness before God the Father. He accepted the task that God the Father had set before him. The Holy Spirit comes down to strengthen him for that task. 
And then the father speaks words of love and of affirmation for Jesus, who's going to now start this journey that's inevitably going to lead to a cross on that little hill outside the walls of the holy city. Jesus takes our sin upon himself at the Jordan, and he carries those sins all the way to Golgotha, where he receives and accepts the punishment that was due for our sins. He had no sin to repent of. He was the perfect son of God. He did everything right, everything proper. But he took upon himself our sins. And so Jesus is our big brother, if you will. And he comes to bathe in our iniquities that we might be forgiven and receive holiness in exchange that we might, having been baptized into his name, might be washed free of our sins because he took those sins upon himself. So just like me with my siblings, Jesus is willing to get in there where we have been. He's willing to become the sacrifice for sins that he himself never committed. After all, Paul says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. This event, this baptism at the Jordan, is a picture and a symbol of what the Incarnation was designed to do. One who was like us in every way but had no sin would become the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He jumped into the tub, if you will, so that we might be washed clean in our baptisms through him. Now that's something. Wow. Wow. That is love all excelling. And he did that for us. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. Would you pray with me? Father, we come before you today and we give you thanks that you sent your son into the world. And that, Jesus, we thank you that you accepted that task on our behalf. That you got in where we had been, where you took our sin upon yourself. Where we had been washed clean, you became tainted tainted to the point that the Father sends you to the cross that you might receive our punishment. Lord, we give you thanks for that. We will always love you for that. And we give you thanks that in your name we have been made whole. Lord, we pray that you'd bless us this day, watch over our loved ones wherever they might be, and continue to grant your grace to all who call upon you in Jesus' name this day. We bring it to you in his name. Amen couple of announcements. A reminder, Grief Share started this past Sunday, but it's not too late to get in there. If, if you or someone you know has really been struggling with grief over the loss of a loved one, please be encouraged. Encourage others. Bring them. It meets on Sundays from 3 to 5. And like I said, they started this past Sunday, but it's not too late to join that class. And this coming Friday, Camp Coconuts. Um, if you've got kids or grandkids, you, this is an opportunity to, to come and have an indoor um, camping experience. You basically bring a pop-up tent, you pick a room or a spot in the building, you put up your tent, set up your camp, and then the kids will have a blast. There will be games, there will be prizes, there will be snacks, we'll have a fire pit, we'll make s'mores and hot dogs, there will be a movie. And then they get to sleep overnight in their in their camp. And in the morning, there'll be a breakfast provided by uh, Pam and Perry Krause. And we thank them for that, too. So that's this Friday night. Uh, we start about 8 o'clock, set up camp. And about quarter to 9, we'll get started with the festivities. And the kids will have a blast. They always do. So keep that in mind. And uh, I'll see you next week. God be with you. Bye-bye.